and enhancing portraits beautifully with Portrait Bokeh AI is our topic today. A uh, little bit of our coffee break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Now, this can be my favorite topic, or one of them, and that's dealing with beautiful bokeh behind the subject. I'm going to dive in and show you what I'm talking about. So here we are with uh, different examples. Now I'm going to start with my beautiful goddaughter first. This is straight out of the camera. Perfect example of what bokeh is. Now look at the geometric patterns. The geometric patterns were made because of the lens, which, let's look at it here. It was a Sigma art lens, 85 mil. No, it wasn't. It was a Nikon 70-200, 2.8 lens, shot at 86 uh, millimeters, 2.8. All right? So that's what gave me this beautiful background. Now, what also gave me the beautiful background is Mother Nature. Uh, because here, if you look at the image, the way the light is hitting the trees, I can't remember if it was after a little rainstorm, but... There's specular highlights in these trees. That's what's giving the geometric patterns, all right? So that's one example. Now, let's go to this one here. Notice, even though this was shot right up here at, okay, this was the uh, Sigma 85 millimeter lens, F1.4, 1.4. That's a really, really shallow depth of field here. Notice around him, you're starting to see it, the, the bokeh, not a, not a whole lot, but you do see the blurry. You see how he's separated from the background. All right, and then let's look over here. Look at these. So over here, notice you're getting the geometric shapes. That's because of the way the light was hitting in that area. So I moved them to that area. And now there it is. And look, look at the difference, how we're getting it, all right? So the reason why I wanted to show you this is I want to sh show you that just because we have a portrait bokeh AI tool doesn't mean they're all going to come out looking like this. It's going to blur the background, but if the background has geometric patterns or specular highlights in them, then we're going to get beautiful shots like this, all right? Which brings me to Ricky Lee, all right? I love this shot of him. So here's Ricky Lee, we'll do before and after. So here's the original image. Give, give it a second. Actually, boom. Yeah, okay, it's gonna be a little difficulty here. Come on, oh, there we go. Let's get back out of it. All right, here we are, ready? Here's before. All right, there he is. The background is extremely uninteresting. And then look at it afterwards. All right, so when do we use something like this? Well, when the background, in the, like in this case here, looks horrible, that's when I want to use Portrait Bokeh AI because I want to add something interesting behind it and get rid of any of the distractions on Ricky Lee. All right, so let's see how we do this. I'm going to come over here to, uh, to uh, edits, and I'm just going to discard all of it. So we'll start fresh. All right, ready? Here we go. First thing I want to do is develop the actual image. So what I did is one of my favorites is iconic. Look at that. I just love it. That came up under here where it says for this photo. When I clicked on it, let's see which one it was. Yeah, when I originally clicked on it, it gave me the the iconic one, but that I've already had that as my favorite. So here it is, my favorite. But you know what we're gonna do? Let's dial it back a little bit. All right. So I like it a lot, but again, I just want to dial it back just a touch. So I got it looking the way I want. Beautiful. Now let's look what what iconic did. It did add skin softening, enhanced the face, 
at the eyes, and of course, applying black and white. So we're off to a great start with all this, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do is this. Now I'm gonna come down here to Portrait Bokeh AI. And let's dive into what this is gonna do for us. I wanna give it a generous amount, just to start with. And notice, it already masked him out. Did a great job at masking. These tools down here gives us the option of adding focus, removing focus, or just restoring um, a part of the image back to the original. So we have that set. What I want to do is come down here, and I do want to dial back some of the brightness in the background. So I want that background to be a little bit darker. Yeah, look what it's doing for us. And you know what? I'm going to go back here to edits. And I want to, let's see, take, yeah, right here, it's not as dark as I wanted. So you know what? Let me just go back one second. Here we go. I'm going to dial it back only to, I went back too far. There, there we go. That's what I want. I, I got a little too aggressive on this. So I'm going to move it back to 88. There we are. Now I'm going to apply that Portrait Bokeh AI, give it a generous amount. I can always dial it back. But here's what I want to do. I want to come in here to brightness, and I want to dial the brightness back a bit. And because it's doing such an incredible job masking him out, it's going to help me separate him from the background. Look at that. Before and after. Good, and I can see that separation already. Now, highlights, depth, and edges are what we're gonna deal with. I can't work with warmth yet because, ready for this, I converted it to black and white. <laughs> so look what it's doing if I try to use warmth. So I'm gonna put that back to zero. Now highlight glow. For this image, I don't wanna use it. Go to an extreme so you can see what it does. Look, look, look how it takes any of the highlights and adds like a glow effect to it. Well, that's not what we want, so let's put it back. These are the two that we're gonna finesse. Depth correction and then the edge. Now here's where the depth correction comes in. Moving it to the right, a positive value, is gonna give me more detail in the background. Well, that's not what I want. Moving it to the left, a negative value is going to blur the daylights out of that background. Now, that's way, way too much to an extreme. It looks like I cut them out and just put them on a blurry background. So, we're going to finesse this right about here. Good. And now, edge detection, it looks great. But I'm going to go to an extreme so you can see what, what it does. Here's edge detection. If I go to 100%, 100%, wow, look what it did. It's like, it takes the selection and kind of shrinks it in and look how bad that looks, all right? If I go to the opposite direction, look what it's doing here where it's giving me more detail around him. And because he doesn't have flyaway hairs, you don't notice it as much. But 20 is usually a good starting point. All right, I'll leave it right around here. Now, let me shut this off for a moment. Because I want to zoom in just a little bit tighter. Right about here. That's it. And I'm hoping it's going to um, give me that little, the, 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 um, the edge, I want the, I want the edge not to be as defined, perfect. Good, 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 look at this. So right over here, this area right in here, you see how there's a dark banning with that? Well, I can either fix it one of two ways. I could fix it with the edge, edge correction and just inch that up ever so slightly. And when I do that, look at that. Now look, look how it fixes the edge of the image. If it's not perfect, like right now I like where it's at, but if I want to, I can come here and click on defocus and come in and start painting over the area where I don't want it to be, where I want 
less focus on. All right. Or if I want focus, I'll come back in and I'll do the same. So look, look what it's doing to the image. All right. So by, by, by using the focus versus defocus, what you're really doing, here's defocus again. What, what I'm really doing here is this, is I'm telling it, look, you know what? This area right in here, I know you selected it, but do me a favor and make it defocus. Don't make it um, as sharp. I, want, I don't want it to be very sharp. I want you to defocus that area and look what I'm left with. But if you go overboard, you have to be careful that we don't get this line coming through. And if that happens, again, focus. And what you could also do is change the strength of it. So this is perfect for flyaway hairs. And I'm changing the strength. And from here, what I'm doing is I'm just slowly brushing on the outside of that edge at a very, very, very low strength to try to help get rid of that line. Or once again, bump it up just a little bit until that harsh line, there it goes, goes away. All right? So let's see what we have. Oh, look at that. All right? So overall, we did a great job, but I just wanted to, again, remind you how the portrait uh, bokeh AI tool works, or portrait bokeh AI works, is we start with the amount, and you decide if you want little or a lot. That's up to you. Start, you know, with, with, with a generous amount in the beginning just to see what you're doing. The brush controls are up on top here. But it's these background tools that does all the heavy lifting. You could change the brightness. Either make the background really, really bright or really, really dark. That's up to you. Or a happy medium. Then we talked about the glow tool, about the glow, how it will take the highlights and add a glow effect to it, warmth and color, and then of course the depth correction and the edge correction are the two that will finesse. And keep in mind when you're using all of these at any point, if you click on the information icon over here, it'll come up and it'll actually give you what the, the tools are doing, and I'll say learn more, click on it, and they'll take you right to the website. All right? So there we have it. Um, that's how we use Portrait Bokeh AI. And remember, we're going to use it when the image doesn't have a very interesting background. If you want to get it perfect in camera, use a lens 75 millimeter or greater, typically a 70 to 200, or a portrait lens like an 85, 1.4, would be phenomenal. Position your subject away from the background, and it would help tremendously if what you have in the background, and it could be maybe 80, 90 to 200 feet away. It doesn't have to be directly behind them. It has to be off in the distance where they have either trees, shrubs, or something with specular highlights. Snap the shot, and you'll see how beautiful the beautiful that portrait bokeh uh, will add to that image. If you photograph something and you're looking at it, and the background just isn't doing it for you, you did everything you can. Here's your portrait bokeh AI steps in and helps. All right. Now, for those of you that are watching this on Zoom, let's see if I have this right here for you, and I do. You can join us with the, the Luminar Insiders. This is being recorded live with Luminar Insiders. And you can stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. The Ask Me Anything segment is where uh, participants can ask us any questions pertaining to today's topic or anything with Luminar photography or anything that's happening in the industry. And it's also a great time for tech support if you're having major issues with Luminar Neo. You're welcome to join us Monday and Wednesday from 1 p.m. Eastern time, all right? So if you're here, please stick around. Everyone else, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you at the next coffee break.